So recently, the Young Turks have claimed that the bombing of the Doctors Without Borders Hospital in Syria was the U.S. This video is made to dispel that lie. I'll be making a lot of claims throughout this video. I won't be explaining the backstory behind them or why they're correct. I'll just be linking you to the sources on each of the claims that I specifically list. This is just to make the video shorter. The first major reason that the claim is wrong, the U.S. does not, with very rare exception, use manned jets in rebel-held territory, especially in the north. The reason for this is the Russian SA-17 and the Russian S-400. With both these weapons, they've been painting and locking on to U.S. manned aircrafts in rebel-held territory. But that is not the only reason that we use drones. The other reasons that we primarily use drones is because it's much cheaper you don't have to fuel a drone, you don't have to uh, carry the same size uh, missiles, specifically missiles that could do the amount of damage that was done at this hospital are not capable of being put on a drone. A drone carries very specific type missiles for certain airstrikes depending on what kind of drone it is and they are not capable of bringing down very 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 large buildings like that. Uh, another reason is they're more accurate, they, they're able to surprise, they're much more quieter, etc., etc. There, there are many other reasons that we use drones. Now let's look at the history here. Assad and Russia have been bombing civilians for years slash months. Yet the Young Turks have never reported or rarely reported on this. Despite the fact that Amnesty saying Russia's bombings under the guise of bombing ISIS have been the most egregious war crimes in the past decades, them bombing civilians not even recognizing that they are civilians, them bombing civilians seemingly on purpose. I mean, this there's supermarkets, hospitals, the recent bombing of five hospitals in a single day. How do you justify that? The, the, the hospitals didn't give their coordinates because they didn't want to be considered the target. Yet, Russia still manages to bomb these places, but then Russia says they need the coordinates when we've given them the coordinates before they've bombed hospitals. Or if, they, if it hasn't been Russia, it's been Assad. Yet, even with all of that, just listen to her. Listen to Anna say this. Listen to this. We're not 100% confirmed that this was a U.S.-led airstrike, but I do know from past experiences that these Doctors Without Borders hospitals have been bombed on accident due to U.S. airstrikes and due to faulty intel. I, I hate speculating on something as serious as this, but if I were to speculate, I would say that it's likely it was a U.S. airstrike. So why does Anna think this? Well, she thinks this because the Russians, the Russian State Department, said a U.S. coalition jet was nearby and that no Russian or regime planes were anywhere near there. So... Basically, the reason she believes this is because Russia said so. So, I'm going to assume she believes this too, right? I mean, if we're going to just believe Russians on their, on their word, surely they've never lied, and they're not going to lie, and the State Department doesn't lie. That there's, there's, why not believe this, right? Anna, you are being either insanely uninformed, stupid, or biased. Okay? Or you're lying on purpose. Those, those are your options. So you figure out what you need to do. Next reason we might not bomb the rebel hospitals in rebel-held territory. Oh, I, I don't know. Uh, perhaps because they are our allies. We arm them as well as the YPG to fight ISIS and uh, them to resist Assad and Iran. The only time TYT comes out and talks about civilians dying is when they think the U.S. has done it. The U.S. has bombed a hospital before in Afghanistan. Recently, a report just came out about that where we kind of justify, or don't, not justify, but we, we cite why we don't think those were war crimes because it was a bunch of negligence and not done on purpose. Um, but despite that, we took credit for bombing that. Same with the massive Mosul bombing of the, uh, the, I'll put the footage in here, the Mosul bombing of the, University, I believe it, it was. Uh, it was.
was a very large bombing, and uh, it was being used by ISIS, but I'm sure some civilians got killed in the middle of that too. But nonetheless, anytime we've bombed somewhere, we have accepted credit for it, and we even have a Twitter that posts updates on what we've bombed. Okay? So what is Russia implying by saying it's a lie? They want to create doubt to undermine the United States. They want to create disinformation. They want to create conspiracy theories where you think the U.S. is doing a black flag operation to bomb a hospital to make Russia and Assad look bad. This is the kind of fucking craziness that these people are doing. This is the stupid shit you guys are promoting when you believe these moronic fucking claims. Here's a link for all that crazy shit over here. Great work by Michael Weiss and a couple of other individuals that have exposed this. There's also a case here just yesterday where they edited uh, footage and said that Aleppo, I'm not kidding, Aleppo uh, white helmet guys were bombed by Al-Qaeda Air Force. Okay? That is something that they, they literally edited and cobbled together to say that. They, they removed part of the footage. I'll, I'll, I'll link right to it. You guys can see it for yourselves. Uh, you might need someone to help you with the Arabic subtitle or uh, Arabic translation. But regardless, this, this, is, this is something that they do constantly. It's create lies while reporting some correct news so you don't know for sure which, which part is a lie and which part isn't. So if you trust these guys at all, you're going to fall susceptible to these fucking insane claims. Let's look at some of the recent escalations in tensions with Russia. They recently flew within feet of our battleship. We're just getting in these really very disturbing, incredible images, the video of Russian warplanes buzzing a U.S. Uh, U.S. Navy destroyer, the USS Cook, in international waters in the Baltic Sea. Uh, you served as a, a pilot uh, in the U.S. Air Force. How dangerous is this kind of situation where these fighter jets actually come within 75 feet of the Cook? Yeah, it's very dangerous. Uh, two points on that. Number one, 75 feet is actually really close, and uh, this isn't uh, typical operating procedures. If you want to show a force, it's usually not at 75 feet. Uh, and, and the other issue is they were basically simulating a strafing run on our Navy ship. Now, I give a lot of uh, congratulations, I guess, a lot of shout outs to the commander for exercising discipline in this situation. But had this been, for whatever reason, a real strafing run, we would not have known that until after the first pass. So this is very serious escalation. It's also worthy to note, I believe there was a Polish helicopter on board. Uh, you know, in 2006, I was in Kyrgyzstan with the military and the Russians would do this occasionally. They'd overfly our military base just as a show of force, but they would not fly over at 75 feet, and we knew they were just showing off versus this, which is an extremely dangerous escalation. Where John Kerry said we would have been completely in the right in shooting down these jets that were in our airspace. We gave them no consequences for this, and nothing was done about it. Just yesterday, they were flying and barrel rolling around a U.S. airliner in air. I'm, I'm linking all the way to these articles, I, everything. You guys can do all your own research. So Russia is constantly harassing and aggressing and trying trying to escalate things, okay? That is all they have been doing, non-stop. With that, the past 48 hours, a Syrian has been dying once every 13 minutes. Do not let these Russians and Assad and all these propaganda outlets succeed in misinforming people and disinforming people. And make sure you don't let the Young Turks become a Russia Today secondary outlet. Push back on these fucking morons. These insane isolationists, these these madmen that are willing to watch people die with no regard for their lives and enable it. In, in, in fact, when they do this kind of stuff, they're promoting it in a sense. We cannot let these body bag liberals have the quiet life of liberalism that they are trying to achieve. It's not that simple.